This one, number six, The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy Gentleman by Lawrence Stern, is, I have to confess, one of my very favorite novels in the English tradition. Um, I remember when I first read it, I read it in a field in France. I was staying in this house on a holiday, and I had this book with me, and I still have the book, and the copy is an Everyman hardback. And I can remember the sensation of lying in this hot field reading this book, and it's, it's a book which I just simply adore. Um, Lawrence Stern is an interesting character in this series because he wrote this novel, which is called commonly Trist Trist Tristram Shandy, quite late in life. He was in his late 50s. He was a country parson living in York, but actually he'd grown up in Ireland, and in some ways this book, which is a really wacky book, um, is very, very Irish. We, we're talking about the English and American tradition, but the English and American tradition is also periodically leavened by fantastic contributions from the Irish. We've, we've already mentioned Dean Swift, Jonathan Swift. So here's another one, Lawrence Stern, who sounds English and was English, but had been raised in Ireland. So let's call him Irish for the purposes of this, of this conversation. It comes out in 1759, which is again, to go back to a point I've made in previous episodes, he's writing at a time of intense national anxiety. Britain is actually at war at this point. A war with something called the Seven Years' War, which was the first truly global conflict involving the English, the French, um, and battles in America, India, the Caribbean, sea battles and land battles in what is now Canada. And so there's a lot going on, there's a lot of fighting going on. Britain is sort of booming and is becoming this fir first imperial power. There's a lot of money and there's a lot of, and there's a, gr a now pretty well established and, 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 and growing readership. And the novel is now coming up to nearly 100 years old and there's a good tradition and people know what it's all about. And along comes Lawrence Stern and he subverts it. And this book is a subversion of all the ideas and methods that have been developed by all the previous generations of novelists. And, and it's a, really a series of jokes. And it, and it has been described by one critic as, as one of the great Shaggy Dog stories. So, for example, Tristram Shandy, who's the hero, when the book opens, he's about to be conceived, but he isn't conceived because his father, who's about to have sex with his mother, uh, suddenly remembers he hasn't wound the clock. And there's a hilarious opening where he breaks off from having sex with his, his wife to wind the clock, the family clock. And so the whole thing is slightly, slightly bawdy and playing with the idea of narrative and playing with withholding information, withholding uh, the aspects of the plot, and also just telling a series of sort of more or less discontinuous narratives. It, 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 it struck a note and it struck a chord and became a huge bestseller and made Stern into a, a great London celebrity in the 1760s. He was immensely popular and, like all bestsellers, very controversial. Samuel Johnson, several years later, said he, to, to Boswell, his biographer, nothing odd will do long. Tristram Shandy did not last. Actually, Tristram Shandy did last. Um, it was very odd. It was very successful. Tristram Shandy was published into a market where there was a real appetite for new writing and in which writers were now becoming famous as writers and novelists. This is a fairly new thing. And Stern himself said, I wrote not to be fed, but to be famous. So he wanted to, he wanted acclaim, he wanted applause, he wanted big audiences, and that was his thing. And so to be a bestseller for him was very, very important. And Shandy was indeed a bestseller. It, and again, like many bestsellers, it was initially turned down. He published it himself, and then it caught on, became a word of mouth bestseller in, in Yorkshire, and then we came to London and was launched in London in 1759. People say, what, what is Tristram Shandy about? Well, I could say it's about 800 pages long. Um, at the end of the book, Tristram Shandy's long-suffering mother 
asks the, that, that very question. She, she says, Lord, what is all this story about? And Parson Yorick, one of the characters, says, a cock and a bull, and one of the best of its kind I ever heard. So it's a cock and bull story. So it's an Irish shaggy dog story. It's a, a series of disconnected tales. It's about Parson Yorick, is a hit of Shandy's Uncle Toby. Part of it is set in, in with, with reminiscences of the war um, in, uh, in the Low Countries, in Marlborough's battle against the French in the 1700s. And there's a lot about fighting. It's very modern, and which brings us to another thing about this, about Tristram Shandy, is it, it has been very influential in recent times. Writers like Salman Rushdie, for example, um, and Peter Kerr, the Australian writer, um, were, are very familiar with, with Tristram Shandy. Um, Carey actually published a book called the, the Real Life of Tristram Smith, which was a sort of nod in the direction of Shandy. So he's very influential. He's very modern in the sense that he's playing with the, with the idea of the novel. And he is selling in very large numbers.